In the darkness of space, something is coming. In fact, it's coming right for the International Space Station, which is orbiting the Earth at 17,500 miles per hour, which is also roughly the speed of the object coming straight at it. And in just a few moments, the astronauts on board are going to see something you really don't want to see in space. In 2016, this actually happened. And the object that collided with the space station was a fleck of paint, no bigger than a few thousandths of a millimeter across. The good news, the damage to that window wasn't enough to cause any safety problems. The bad news, had it been an object larger than 10 centimeters, it could have shattered a satellite or a spacecraft into pieces. The worst news, there's a lot more where that fleck of paint came from. Outer space, boundless, inspiring, beautiful, and a junkyard. According to NASA, there are over 23,000 pieces of debris larger than a softball orbiting the Earth. Expand out to include items bigger than a marble, and the number grows to half a million. Where's all of it coming from? Some of it's debris from past missions. Some of it is fragments of old rockets or defunct spacecraft. And some of it is stuff that our friends in the international community have just blown the shit out of. In 2007, China ran a weapons test in which it destroyed an old weather satellite with a missile, a single incident that added more than 3,500 pieces of large debris to the Earth's orbit. In 2021, Russia conducted a similar exercise, which threw so much material towards the International Space Station that NASA had to wake the astronauts on board and tell them to evacuate to their space capsules. There's a big problem here. As the amount of space junk increases, so do the chances of a potentially devastating accident. One study estimated that in the next 20 years, the risk of a serious collision with a satellite will increase from 11% to 90%. And those satellites do everything from helping synchronize electrical grids, to monitoring the weather, to providing internet access to people who'd otherwise be cut off from the outside world. How could we allow something like this to happen? Well, who's we? You see, the problem with space junk is just one of several difficulties that all trace back to one basic fact. No one owns space. That's by design. In 1967, the US, the Soviet Union, and the United Kingdom took the lead on the Outer Space Treaty, an international agreement that all the world's major powers signed on to, laying down the principle that space was the common property of humanity and that no nation could make a claim to any part of it. Now, there are obvious upsides to that. For one, it's kept power-hungry countries from running amok, trying to gobble up cosmic real estate. Well, power-hungry countries in Texas, probably. But on the other hand, as humanity gets increasingly active in space, it raises an important question. Who's in charge here? And that question is likely to hang over some of the biggest disputes about space in the coming decades. It's going to be a factor when it comes to national security. Currently, the US, China, Russia, and India all have the capacity to destroy orbiting satellites. Russia has already threatened Western satellites if they're used to assist with the war in Ukraine. And there's a clear reason for that. As one Ukrainian commander said, fighting at the front lines without the assistance of satellites is like fighting without a gun. The rules around those kinds of attacks on satellites? There really aren't any, because the Outer Space Treaty was written before most of these technologies existed. Although it's worth asking if any of these hostile powers would abide by the rules anyway. That's a question when it comes to holding territory in space as well. One thing the Outer Space Treaty is clear about is that countries don't get to claim chunks of outer space as their own. Yet the head of NASA, Bill Nelson, told an interviewer in 2022 that he worries China has precisely that plan for the moon. And whether or not that's actually Beijing's ambition, Pentagon officials have warned that China could surpass the United States as the world's dominant space power 
within the next decade. One other area where the question of who owns space is going to be important might surprise you. Mining. Space is filled with precious minerals and rare metals. That's part of the reason the U.S. and 20 other countries, though notably not Russia or China, have signed on to an agreement called the Artemis Accords, which, while still prohibiting countries from controlling territory in space, does allow them the right to resources they extract in space. And if you're wondering why anyone would bother with a mining process that difficult, consider the following. It's been estimated that a single asteroid located between Mars and Jupiter may contain metals worth as much as 10 quintillion dollars. You can look it up, that's a real number. It's also a number larger than the size of the entire global economy. So, are we destined for a future of anarchy in outer space? I mean, researchers have actually warned that all that mineral wealth could lead to space pirates, which we know is bad, but does sound incredibly cool. But there also might be hope for order as well, because we actually have experience with a situation like this in the world's oceans. No one owns them either. But thanks to centuries of diplomacy and more than a little conflict, nations around the world have worked out rules to allow maritime trade combat overfishing, and importantly, punish people who break the rules. In the end, they decided their self-interest was better served by cooperation than conflict. Will we be able to pull that off in space? That depends a lot on what leaders here on Earth are willing to do. But let's hope for the best, because if we fall short, I think we all know what that means. <laughs>